Okay, so the paper I'm going to talk about is uh, BERT, which is uh, pre-training of deep directional transformers for language understanding. Okay, so uh, throughout the presentation of this paper, you realize that there's no image uh, information, so I'll explain why later. Okay, but first, uh, focusing on what BERT is. Uh, so first, um, the idea is that uh, when we want to learn a neural network, right? Uh, so one of the ways to uh, teach a neural network how to uh, perform on a task is to teach it a language model. So in the literature, there's uh, been few papers over the past year that say that you actually get pretty good results if you first pre-train the model that you want to use on a language model, and then you fine-tune the pre-trained language model to fit your task, the thing that you want to do. Uh, so there's um, two pretty famous ones. First one is uh, OpenAI um, GPT. Uh, so what this does is that uh, it uses um, this thing called a transformer and then the transformer it's like a stack of uh, neural layers and then uh, you feed the data um, in a unidirection manner from left to right and you get some token outputs and from the token outputs you can actually do uh, use it to perform a task it can be classification, it can be tagging, stuff like that uh, the other one it's ELMO ELMO it's a uh, Similar idea, but what they do is they do bidirectional. So they train two uh, LSTMs, and the two LSTMs uh, are in different directions. So the it learns a bidirectional representation of the language model instead of the unidirectional one in the OpenAI GPT. Okay, so what is language model? Language model essentially says that if you are given a sequence of n tokens, the forward language model is going to be uh, given everything from 1 to k minus 1, you want to predict k and you sum up, I don't know, you multiply the probability of all those, uh, all those, prob you multiply the probabilities of the tk's given the previous uh, tokens. So using the same idea, you can do the backwards language model, which is uh, you want to predict this token given the next few tokens all the way to the end. So what uh, BERT does is actually they use a bi-directional language model so you are trying to predict the word given both the front and the back uh, tokens. Okay. So this is ELMO. So ELMO takes uh, the token, it goes left and goes right, and then you predict. Okay, so you combine them to give the task-specific ELMO vector. So go on. So for BERT, the uh, thing is, if you have a multi-layer context, the bidirectional conditioning allows the words to sort of see themselves. So if you look at the image, right, there's two red uh, arrows. What happens is that when you feed the token in, the prediction for the second token is going to be conditioned on the token N. But this output is going to be fed back to the um, part that's going to predict uh, the TN, which is the output of token N. So in this manner, the authors claim that um, the predictions become trivial because the model can just learn to copy the weights over to the last layer, uh, the last layer and then use that to predict. So the prediction is very easy and the model doesn't learn anything except to just copy the weights. So the solution that the BERT authors came up with is to randomly replace the selected tokens when they train the model. So First, they have a sentence, right? And then they select 15% of the tokens. Out of the 15%, they have uh, this uh, sequence of replacing. So 80% will be replaced with a mass token. So this is to um, sort of like tell the model that this is what I want you to predict. 10%, they will replace it with a random word. So the model actually doesn't know, like it also has to predict this word. So this one is just to make sure that the model remembers, uh, or tries to remember, or tries to predict all words. And then 10% you keep the selected token unchanged to bias the representation output towards the actual uh, word. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is the model. Uh, and for this case, right, the task that we're talking about is name entity uh, recognition, so tagging. So what they do is uh, after they pre-train the model on the language model, after they pre-train on the language model, you then feed the a uh, sentence you want to classify in. So first is the classification token, which is a standard input, uh, the standard first token that they input to the model. Then they'll put in the tokens for the sentence. 
it will go through the model and the output uh, is used to classify. So it's going to be the T1 is going to be out, T2 is going to be a uh, beginning of a person token, so on and so forth. Okay, so my review questions. <laughs> Up to now, I have not talked about image because it seems like. Uh, oh, okay. Before that, first thing is that uh, what Maxim talked about. So in the NER uh, literature, right? Organizations are usually uh, used to refer to groups of people, and the people are just individuals. So uh, you can see like uh, the MUC6 is the task from 1995. That's what uh, the person is, a named person or family. It's not like a musical group. So in the Wikipedia corpus uh, in 2013, someone actually did the same task, and they define organization as musical groups. Yeah. So the corpus itself, um, it's not released by the authors, so we can't actually look at what uh, tagging they've done. But based on the examples that they gave, it's a bit weird that the Radiohead and the Florence and the Machine are persons. Yeah, so the first part, I already have doubts about the corpus quality, like how do they tag it? Right, next. Uh, so I also have questions on the significance of the image data. So what the authors claim is that in image 5, uh, example D, which is shown on the right, the model pays attention to the Apple logo, so it knows that Apple is organization. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so you see the cute bird face there. So I actually went to run the bird model, and that's the result of the output. And you can see that Apple is also tagged as organization. So what is the point of the image data? And I was thinking, like, okay, maybe bird, uh, you have to pre-train on the corpus, right? So maybe let's try a plug and play one, something simpler. So I use this library called Flare, and Flare tag it as a person as well. Yeah. So without the full corpus, we can't actually see like uh, what are the, what how the image data benefits the uh, task. Oops. Okay. So and this one it's uh, one of the examples that was given as a negative example. The tension is going to a wrong part of the image. Uh, so you miss tagging SBU, which is uh, organization. But if you run BERT and FLARE, again, SBU is tagged as uh, organization. So to me, like the, it seems like the image doesn't do much if it does anything at all. And even if it does something, it might mislead the tagging. So why do we need the image in the first place? And lastly, uh, model formulation. So when they created the in the paper when they did the image uh, recognition, right, uh, the attention, they used the model, and that model can actually be used to solve this task as well, which is called COCO. So it's not just a image recognition, it's like a identifying what are the parts of the image. So there's things like people, sports, a baseball glove, stuff like that. So I was thinking, uh, why didn't they just take all these uh, categories, right? So when you have an image, you can identify what items are inside the image. You can actually take the words from here and use it um, to fit into the text, the sentence, and use that as your image data instead. Yeah. So that might be actually more helpful than just looking at the areas of the image. Because areas of the image, they can zoom into a part that's not important. But if you use like a person or baseball glove, then you can actually say that I need to have some representation of baseball glove into the sentence. Then can I tag the sentence properly. Yeah. So it's not clear to me why they didn't try this since they already had the model working. So that's all. So I need to reply, right? Uh, any questions first? For Chao Chao? That's you see, 1995. This is 2013. It's like too old. They just <laughs> revised it and created their own tagging scheme. Um, but I, I I agree, right? For name identity tagging, you create uh, guidelines uh, how to tag the names and what does it mean to have a particular mention of a name there. No, I guess they just didn't follow it. Does it answer your question? 
significance of image data? Well, uh, again, these uh, things are trained on a different data sets, right? Not the data set they provide. In their particular uh, data set, they find that uh, they can only identify Apple when they pre input the image inside, right? And they show that the quality improves, right? Compressor to what? Because they didn't run bird or flag on their own. Uh, yeah, quality improves in, the, in comparison to a CRF model. Yeah, but they, they, they put the attention in and it works magically, right? But they didn't compare to bird or flag. Like, what I'm saying is that if you just use their purpose, the snap and Twitter, right? Take just the sentences, run it through flag, for example. Yeah. And you can show the F1. And yeah, show I, I guess the point is to show that the visual features some kind can, can help the thing so and, and we can't deny it can't because we see improvement in quality right so uh, their uh, their main point is not to compare it to this cute guy right? or this uh, library player because they probably use more data they probably use a different corpus that's, that's probably why in this particular case they can identify the organization correctly but their task to show image words you can look at the image, you can introduce the context enough to identify the apple. Then shouldn't you compare to an image that has a real apple? Yeah, they might. They might, yeah. They might have considered this experiment, so they didn't. That's for the future work. Yeah. Uh, significance, that's the same thing. Uh, almost, right? So, they... Yeah, maybe. Maybe they don't have enough data to learn the good attention, right? Um, while these guys have a uh, different corpus, different data set. Maybe they are, that's, maybe it's related to this, the first thing, like corpus tech compatibility, right? How do you know this uh, compatible to their uh, tagging scheme? You don't. Uh, model formulation. Uh, what is your question was here? So they could have used the categories because the image uh, CNN that they use, right, could already extract the categories from the Coco data set. Right. So you are suggesting to make an improvement, put the model in, right? Um, yeah, they could have done that, for example. So you mean to introduce this text, right, yeah. instead, and to put it, fit into the model, right? Yeah. So I guess uh, sometimes you need the face of uh, Tom York to identify that it's Radiohead, <laughs> right? It's not just enough to know that it's a person, it's, uh, it's you, you need to look at the face. <laughs> and uh, Blake Lively is the same, right? Might not be enough, but yeah, that's, I think, a good improvement. My half back, they say they have a type of person. Mm. So, you can likely the, the, the entity is the person. Is yeah, yeah, if the so entity is a person, yeah. you you want yeah. to know what, who to this particular person is. Yeah, to, to reduce the distribution yeah. between the person and the organization. Right. It might happen. So, uh, model for formulation. That's the same. The same question, right? So.